Hey, thank you. I want to thank the Republican Party of Kentucky and Steve Robertson for having us and hosting us today. I'd like to introduce you to my family. It's my wife, Kelly, and my kids, Robert and William, and my mother-in-law, Lillian. Uh, Duncan is my middle son, and then we didn't, thought we didn't have enough kids, so we brought some cousins to <laughs> take them in turn. I have a message, a message from the Tea Party, a message that is loud and clear and does not mince words. We've come to take our government back. Politicians of all stripes and all persuasions have sold us down the river. They've offered us false promises, illusions. They've offered us the notion that a country can make, maintain its wealth and maintain its greatness while continuing to spend more than it takes in. We, the members of the Tea Party movement, you, the members of this movement, have come to take our government back from the special interests, from the lobbyists, from the pork barrel politicians who continue to spend our country into oblivion. This movement is big. This movement is large and getting larger. Our campaign is propelled by this movement. We started out 11 points down four or five months ago to go to 19 points up. Our campaign moves with a momentum that astounds even myself. This is a momentum, this is a movement that cries out no more deficits, no more bailouts, and no more pork barrel spending. They have taxed us beyond belief. They have borrowed and borrowed until our future generations, our kids and our grandkids, will be paying this debt. We have to stop them before it's too late. Our system of government is broken. We once had a government that was restrained by the Constitution. The Constitution limited the functions of government, and we lived with a small government. But that government is gone awry. The government is out of control. We now have a government where politicians, if they can cobble together a majority, think they can do anything they want with government. They interview these people, who are our congressmen, men and women, and they ask them, where is the constitutional authority for what you are doing? And their blank looks come. The deer in the headlines. <laughs> they have no idea. Some of them have never, ever thought of where is the constitutional justification for what you do. Thomas Jefferson wrote that in questions of power, let no more be heard of confidence in man but bind him from his mischief by the chains of the Constitution. Yes. All right. All right. These constitutional chains have been broken, they've been loose. We are adrift as a society, and as a consequence, our government has run amok and is out of control. I am galled by politicians who come to my town. I have been for many years. People say, why do you run? Why would you leave a profession like being a physician that's universally respected to go into a profession that's almost universally denigrated? <laughs> I do it because I'm worried. But I've been galled for many years. I've been galled by the politicians who come to my town with large, oversized checks emblazoned with their signature as if it's their money they're bringing back to me. It's not their money, it's your money, it's our money, and I will always fight to keep it in Kentucky, not send it to Washington. Yeah. America 
Americans are waking up at these fake checks, these illusions of wealth, this cash for clunkers, these stimulus checks, that they're not real. It's an illusion. They tell you, here's $250. Just go to the mall. <laughs> okay. I know I have one good friend here who is an economist, but that's their plan. That's their economic plan is go to the mall. Here's some money and go to the mall. We know as individuals that doesn't work. We know as a country, ultimately, we will pay a price. I think we're very close to that point where we will pay a price if we don't get our government under control. Americans are waking up to this. That's what the Tea Party movement's about. It's what's propelling our campaign forward. When I'm elected, I like the sound. Of that. <laughs> when I am elected, I will not vote for any budget that's not balanced, Republican or Democrat. You won't find many politicians who will say that. We've had years when Republicans were in charge when the deficit got worse. I think our party is a great party. I think our platform is a great platform, but we have to stick to our platform. We have to believe in something, and it's not just enough to have an R next to your name unless you believe in something. Yeah. Yeah. in Washington, the pork barrel spending that goes on and on is directly related to the career politicians. I believe that we will only get our government back, that we will only reform the system if we limit all of their terms. That's right. right. Here in Frankfurt, we do some things well. One of the things we do well is that we have a constitution in Kentucky that forbids definite deficit spending. At the end of the day, in Kentucky, Republicans and Democrats fight like cats and dogs, but they have to balance their budget. Contrast that with California. We're going to be paying taxes in Kentucky to bail out California before long. California. In Washington, they have a printing press. We don't have that in Kentucky. So there are some good things we have in Kentucky then maybe we need to take some of these Kentucky values to Washington. I will introduce term limits. I will introduce a balanced budget amendment. These are ideas that have been out there for a while, and some say to me, oh, it's never going to happen. It's going to happen if we rise up as a people, and if there's a national movement that we can get going, it will happen. We have to try. We cannot give up on our country. We have to fight for this, but we have to have rules. I don't think you can elect enough good people. I hope I'll be one of the good people, but you can't probably even elect enough good people unless you have rules. We should obey the Constitution. We should add a few new rules, term limits and a balanced budget amendment. As each bill comes forward, when I'm elected, yeah. I can look at the appropriations bills, and if we're 20% over budget, I will amend every appropriations bill to reduce it by 20%. Now some say, well, that's pretty harsh. If we don't do it, no one will. You get these middle-of-the-road, bland career politicians. They just want the office. They want it for the rest of their life. They think it's owed to them. They think they've inherited the office. We need someone who's a citizen, someone who will go, try very hard to change, and if I can't do it, I come back and you do it. The next guy does. But you don't want somebody who goes for 50 years and just becomes part of the same good old boy system that has bankrupted our country. We stand at a crossroads. We are being consumed by debt in this country. I think it is very, very serious, and I am very, very worried or I wouldn't do this. We have to get our country back under control. I think we can do it. The movement is big. The movement is large. You here are part of that movement, and you are what make it possible for me. We are well-funded. We're doing well in the polls. We have limitless resources of volunteers like yourself who have been knocking on doors for the last six months. 
The other side won't even dream of it for a few months, and our people have voluntarily been knocking on doors for months. We have a catalyst, we have a movement, we have something the other side cannot dream of. I thank you very much for coming out today, and I hope you will join me in taking back this great nation.